Hi, um, I'm Lewis Metzger, and I uh, really thank you for the opportunity. Tonight, I'm going to talk about how our future drugs will come from the oceans and uh, hopefully make for you a selfish case for protecting ocean biodiversity. So this biodiversity is threatened by everything from coral bleaching to plastic accumulation to uh, the mining of seabed metal nodules to things like the oil spill that recently happened in Mauritius. Evolved chemistry in the oceans and elsewhere is one of humanity's greatest assets, whether it be sponges that make potentially anti-cancer compounds or enzymes that have evolved to do green chemistry. So nature's chemistry is encoded by DNA. So organisms via their DNA, RNA, and proteins encode chemistry, and this chemistry evolves with the organism, and ocean organisms encode their own chemistry. Fewer than 90% of ocean species have even been identified, and far fewer of that have been carefully characterized. So what sort of drugs might lurk in the deep, and what sorts of molecules might, might, might we lose if we lose species diversity? A good example would be compounds from cone snail venom. Here a cone snail is stunning a fish as it envelops it with its stomach. Uh, this venom has evolved over deep time in cone snails. And one of these venom components uh, has been used to make a non-opioid pain drug uh, called zaconitide. And if you look at the three-dimensional rendering on the far right of the slide, you'll see that this is a very shapely molecule. More on that later. Calichondrin B, this elaborate molecule uh, isolated from a sponge, was used to make the drug arabulin, and this is a treatment for metastatic breast cancer. It's been successful. Fucoidins are molecules that have recently been shown from brown algae uh, to inhibit SARS-CoV-2 viral entry into mammalian cells in the laboratory. So this might be a starting point for therapeutics. Alginates are polymers that are found in algae that are used traditionally in wound dressings, but they're now being used as scaffolds to grow new cells uh, for regenerative medicine. Sponges inspired nucleoside analogs uh, that were used to, to develop drugs. AZT, the first effective HIV therapy, uh, was derived from these nucleoside analogs, as is valacyclovir used for herpes. Nucleoside analogs from sponges also led to the development of ceterabine, and this is a drug that was a game changer in the treatment of certain types of leukemia, uh, really increasing survival rates. Cyclomerins are anti-infectives discovered from an ocean bacterium in the Bahamas, and some types of them uh, seem to kill the bacteria that causes tuberculosis. Others target a, a parasite causing malaria. Rampomycin was discovered in coastal soil on Easter Island. Originally, it was an antifungal, but it's now a very important drug for immunosuppressant uh, anti-rejection drugs, uh, and it's used uh, to prevent organ rejection in transplant patients. So the ocean has many gradients, temperature, light, nutrients, salinity, gases, pressure, and more. And these act upon the organisms that live there over deep time to result in really unique chemistry. And the evolution of organisms, I should emphasize, is evolution of chemistry. DNA via RNA via proteins encodes chemistry. And as organisms evolve, their chemistry evolves. And the reproduction of the conditions of this evolution is difficult. Nature's chemistry is special because it, natural molecules have handedness. Acetaminophen doesn't, but rifampicin on the right with the hatch marks shows points of handedness. And this handedness leads to shapeliness. So rifampicin is shown in red, rendered in a space filling model. Because of these points of handedness, it fits into an enzyme that is a drug target, shown in blue. And this is a feature of natural drugs. So many of these natural compounds are the type of compounds that a medicinal chemist wouldn't dream of, but have evolved in na nature. And if we lose species diversity, we lose chemistry that we won't rediscover. So my takeaway is the oceans contain medicinal treasures that evolved in deep time and under unique conditions. And once lost, they may never be rediscovered. So pre preserving biodiversity is really self-preservation. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you, Lewis. And where do you see uh, medicine, you know, if we lose the ocean? Well, I mean, it's it's an enormous source of biodiversity. Certainly there is a biodiversity on land, but we need uh, every molecular handle we can get uh, to discover new drugs, especially for anti-infectives. Uh, so uh, it would be it would be very tragic, and it's hard to put a price on that. 